All right, so now we're gonna focus on the third and last form of energy in this unit is spring potential energy. So here's the idea. Energy can be stored in a spring because it ultimately takes work to stretch or compress a spring, which is where that energy kind of comes in. So it's like, we call it pot spring potential energy because of the potential to turn into other forms of energy or kinetic energy. So it's given by one half kx squared. So if you remember our, for our spring, spring force was equal to kx, right? And so this is one half kx squared is the amount of energy. And remember that x, the x and the k exact same meanings as it is in Hooke's law. K is the spring constant. It's a structure of the spring itself. X is how much we've stretched or compressed the spring from its relaxed length. Okay, so it's the exact same use of the variables there. Remember, it's not what the length of the spring is, it's how much it is stretched relative to its relaxed length. And in general, we only include the spring potential energy if the spring is included in the system. So we're gonna think of the spring force as being internal to the system if we include the spring as part of our system, okay? So now we have a few modifications to make here. We have an object, our choices are on a system are the object or multiple objects, the objects plus the earth, the objects plus the spring, or all three, objects, earth, and spring. Okay, those are the only, those are the only permutations of choices of systems that we're gonna have. So if we include the spring, we include kinetic and spring potential energy. If we include the earth and the spring, then we have the most complicated scenario. We have kinetic energy, gravitational potential, and spring potential energy in our system. And just as a reminder, if you're including the spring in the system, we ignore any work done by the spring because it is an internal force. We have made it part of our system. Everything else in our process is identical. There's no difference in how we treat anything else. So the choice of the system is really critical. A lot of people really skip over this part. This is skipped often. The biggest mistake is to not understand the system. What is the system? So I cannot ask you how much gravitational potential energy there is. Or if I tell you the system is only an object and I ask you how much gravitational potential energy there is, you need to tell me zero. There is no gravitational potential energy if I do not include the Earth in the system. So context matters. How I define the system matters and College Board will stress the system many times when it comes to energy. Okay, so let's take a look at an object, a, 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 an example here. We have an object of mass 10 kilograms, is released, released so its initial velocity here is zero, slides down to the bottom, a 30 degree rough incline, so there's friction here, then collides with a horizontal mass of spring, compressing it to a maximum distance 0.75 meters. The spring constant is 500 newtons per meter, the height of the incline is two meters, and the horizontal surface is frictionless. There's no friction here, and there's some friction here. Okay, so, we have a lot of things happening here. We want to know the speed of the object at the bottom of the incline. So I would say there are three points of interest which we might calculate energy. We have energy at the top here. We have energy at the bottom here. And then when we have maximum compression, it compresses 0 0.75 meters. And then it actually comes to a rest here, by the way. Okay, why does it come to a rest? Because if the velocity were not zero, at the maximum compression, then it would compress a little bit further. So when we're compressing it, we got to think like, oh, it's being compressed, and then it's going to come to a stop because if it had any velocity left over, it would keep going. It wouldn't be the maximum compression. So at maximum compression, it's about to change directions and then go in the opposite direction. Okay. So we know the speed at the bottom of the incline. So are we going to pick from here to here, here to here, or here to here? Well, I want to know what the speed is here. So I probably am gonna pick at least from these two points or these two points. The problem around these two points is I don't know anything about the friction, right? Because they said it was a rough surface, there's some friction in here. So a big unknown is not just the velocity, but how much friction is happening there. So we're probably gonna to wanna to do this between these two points here, between here and here as the, the block slides. So what's our system gonna be? Well, because there's no change in height, we'll make the system the block plus the spring. You can include the earth, but there's no change in height, so it doesn't really matter because the height's gonna be zero or would set the reference height h to zero, in which case in both cases, the gravitational potential energy would be zero, so it doesn't really matter if you include the earth or not. Now let's look at, draw the free body diagram. So, you know, in general, it's there's no friction, so there's mg, there's a normal force, and when it collides with the spring, there's gonna be a spring force acting here because you're gonna compress the spring. Spring wants to get back to its relaxed length, so there's spring force. However, none of these forces are gonna do work because the displacement is only to the right. 
So the normal force and gravity are perpendicular to the displacement, means the work done by those is zero. And then the spring force is gonna do negative work technically, but it's part of our system. So also it's internal. So none of these forces are gonna do any work. So we know that the work is zero here. Okay, so it takes a lot of steps in there to analyze. Make sure you understand why is the work zero. We studied every one of those forces and decided whether or not it's going to do any work. Okay, now let's look at the initial energy, the energy here. Now, because it's the block in the spring, we're only including kinetic energy and spring potential energy. So, has some kinetic energy. Does it have any spring potential energy? Well, the spring is not compressed at this point. So no, this is the only energy it has. Final energy. Well, kinetic energy is zero, because at the maximum compression, the velocity is zero, but it does have some spring potential energy here. Okay, and then finally we do work is the change in energy. That's gonna be zero is equal to one half mv squared minus one half kx squared. Oops, sorry, the other way around. Final minus initial, one half kx squared minus one half mv squared. The one halves cancel if you divide them out. We're just gonna move mv squared equals kx squared. And then we're interested in the v. The v is going to be the square root of kx squared over m. So let's plug in some numbers because we know all of these numbers. The spring constant here is K, it's 500. It's compressed uh, 0 0.75 meters. That's how much we've compressed the spring. And then divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms here. So then we'll figure out the speed by doing square root of 500 times 0.75 squared divided by 10. That gives me 5.3 meters per second. Now, what is the work of friction on the object while it's on the incline? Okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's look at going from here to here. Now that I know this part, let's go from here to here. You could also go from here all the way to there. Kind of doesn't really matter, but let's just go from here to here just because we want to only talk about the incline part. So the system, because there's a change in height, we're going to make it the block plus the earth. Do I need to include the spring? Well, the spring's not being compressed at all. So it doesn't really matter. During both times, the spring is gonna be relaxed during this motion. So it doesn't really matter to include the spring. Let's draw our free body diagram, where during the motion, we're gonna have gravity. We're gonna have a normal force perpendicular to the surface, and we'll have a frictional force parallel to the surface. That's kinetic friction. Again, go back to look at how to do friction if you're not sure how to draw the free body diagrams. And the displacement is this way down the ramp. The direction doesn't change. Okay, so which one of those do work? Normal force perpendicular to displacement, doesn't do any work because it's perpendicular, right? Gravity doesn't do work. It's not external to the system. It does work, but not external work. So only friction does negative does work. So that's the negative force of friction times the displacement is the only work that's happening. And so that's just the work done by friction because they only want us to know what's the work done by friction, okay? What's the initial energy? So because we've included the block and the earth in our system, we're considering kinetic energy but its velocity is zero, so there's no kinetic energy. We're now considering gravitational potential energy, and we'll make down here h equals zero, so that it has gravitational potential energy, mgh, which is m10 times 10 times the height, which is two, which is 200 joules. Okay, final energy at the bottom, does it have kinetic energy? Well, it's moving, does it have some kinetic energy, and has no gravitational potential energy because the height is zero down there. So this is gonna be one half times 10 times V. We do know what that is, 5.3 squared. So it's gonna be uh, squared times 0.5 times 10. That's gonna be 140.6 joules. And so then the work, which is the work done by friction, is the final energy minus the initial energy. So it's 140.6 minus 200 and I get about, we'll just call it round it, negative 60 or negative 55.4, negative 59.4 joules, like that, okay? So that's kind of how that system works. That's the approach, right? Each multiple steps in the calculations in there, but as long as you follow that problem solving steps, what's the system? What's the work portion? Calculate the initial and the final energy with the appropriate energies included based on the system, you're gonna uh, be able to solve pretty much any work energy problem.